Gogoship released the trailer for their new game, Rogue Corps, about a week ago now, and several pieces of information have been made available, as well as many screenshots of in-game footage. So today we're going to go through as much as we can and see if we can uncover any hidden goodies. What's up guys, Jay here and welcome back to the channel, and today we are doing a bit of theory crafting and tinfoil hat wearing. So not long ago, Ghost Ship released a teaser trailer for a brand new project they are working on with Deep Rock Galactic Rogue Core. Naturally, this took a lot of people by surprise, including myself, and understandably, a ton of people have questions about the kinds of things to expect in this new game. Now, while they didn't give us a whole lot of information straight out of the gate, the devs have answered several questions regarding Rogue Core in live streams and Steam posts, and have also released several screenshots of the game that may help shed some light on this new project. So I thought it would be fun and interesting to, number one, talk about what we know about the game so far, and number two, see if we can find any hidden clues or information in these images or answers that may be able to give us an idea of what to expect. So if you guys are ready, let's talk about everything we know so far about Deep Rock Galactic's new gritty upcoming spin-off, Rogue Core. By the way, if you like this video, make sure to hit the bell and subscribe, that way you never miss another upload. Before we go into the video, I want to make it clear and have a quick disclaimer that even though we are going through all of this information, the game is still extremely early in development. Much of what we may talk about today could change later on down the line. However, if we look at Ghost Ship's progress with Deep Rock itself, we see that although many things about the game have changed significantly since early development, much of the core aspects and functions of the game still do remain intact. So I still think it's worth going through all of this to get an idea of what Ghost Ship has planned for Rogue Core, so we understand the basic framework of what they are going to base it on. So first, let's go over the information that we have available to us at the moment. First, just what is Rogue Core about? Well, apparently a new incredibly valuable mineral called Exponite has been discovered deep within the core of planet Hoxus. The Deep Rock Galactic Mining Company immediately sets up covert mining operations to harvest this precious material. But without warning, all the dig sites suddenly went dark and all contact was abruptly lost in what is being referred to as the Grey Out. So as a result, you and up to three friends will become a team of elite dwarven reclaimers to deal with the situation bring the lost dig sites back online, and figure out exactly what happened. Definitely a much more intense storyline compared to what we are used to in normal Deep Rock Galactic. So then just how exactly is Rogue Core different from normal DRG gameplay wise? Well, instead of putting together a loadout beforehand and going into the mission that way, Rogue Core will have more of a rogue light approach, as the devs call it, where in which you enter the mission with a relatively basic equipment loadout, and as you progress, you will acquire upgrades and equipment to aid you in the run. Think of games like Risk of Rain or honestly any battle royale game, except no PvP, thank god. You will also be able to unlock permanent progression rewards between runs for things that you can bring with you immediately. Things like new abilities or weapons or phase suits, which we'll talk about later. The devs have said that a normal run can take anywhere from 30 to 90 minutes, which feels kind of long in my opinion, but then again I have had like 50 minute normal deep rock games too, so maybe it won't be that bad. The game is also said to have a much darker and more serious tone compared to normal Deep Rock Galactic. I'm sure there will still be lighthearted moments here and there, but the dwarves we play as in this game are very different from the mining crew. They are the ones you send in when you want a job done quickly and efficiently. They kind of remind me of the Pinkertons, but hopefully without all the scary boogeyman stories surrounding them. Similar to the space rig, the Reclaimer Dwarves will apparently have their own hub ship known as the Ramrod, where they will be able to do as much prep as they can before departing. Outside of that, there isn't a whole lot more clear information given to us yet, since the game is still pretty early in development. So now let's start diving into the images provided to us by Ghost Ship to see if there's anything we can dig up. Starting with the first image, we see what looks like just a simple POV of a player standing near a doorway and some scaffolding and containers. It's really simple, but there are actually a lot of things that we can take away from this. First, if we look at the surroundings, it looks very similar to the radioactive exclusion zone biome from normal DRG. So we can assume that some of the normal biomes we are used to are going to be appearing in Rogue Core as well. The second thing to keep in mind is that unlike the base DRG experience where the caves that we explore are, for the most part, uncharted, the caves that we are going to be exploring in Rogue Core have already already been explored and marked by the company itself. So there's a lot more industry and actual structure because the company has already set up shop down here, which is a very interesting concept because up until this point, we have not known exactly what we are getting into when we go into the caves. And now we actually get to see a glimpse of how Deep Rock handles its mining operations on a bigger level. The next image shows us even more of this idea, and I'm going to be going through these images in a weird order so that I can express my ideas in better detail. With this image, we get a much wider view of the similar terrain we saw in the last image with what appears to be the same doorway in the distance just seen from much farther back. 
we get to see a lot more of what the outpost that we will be exploring looks like. Starting on the left side, we see what looks like a robotic arm digging into some kind of mineral that looks kind of like magnite, but is certainly something different. Perhaps this is the aforementioned exponite resource that DRG has been working so hard to obtain. Or maybe this is just some new resource that we will be gathering throughout missions. Next, we see a somewhat large contained room that will most likely contain something of use to us as we progress. One thing I can kind of make out in this picture is it looks like Bosco, or at least a robot of his model, is in the corner of the room. So it's possible that we might have Bosco, or a version of him, able to help us if we play solo. Let me know in the comments what you think the robot's name would be if we do get one. Outside of that, this image just gives us a better angle on the kind of machinery and industry in the lower levels of Hoxus. The next image is similar to the last one, except now we clearly are in a different biome than the last one, and based on the obvious flame geysers, we are most likely in the magma core. Outside of that, we also get another look at the kinds of stations that we will be going through, and this one has what appears to be some kind of screen or terminal that we can most likely access. In fact, another image shows us essentially the same setting just from another perspective, this time from inside the building. Here we get a much better view of the interior and the terminal to the left, which looks like it has the symbol for deep dives on it. I'm not sure exactly what that means, but this might very well be a place where we can upgrade and improve ourselves throughout the mission. As I said, Rogue Core is going to have more roguelike gameplay elements to it, so we will be going through missions and stopping at various points to improve ourselves, so this may be a checkpoint of sorts where we have a moment of peace-ish before moving forward. The next image is very interesting and shows us what looks like a new biome type that we have never seen before, with these very large green crystals jutting out into the air. Similar to the green crystals from the radioactive biome, however clearly much different and in my opinion way cooler looking. We also see some sharp smaller rocks sticking up as well. There isn't a whole lot to say about this one other than it looks like we are getting a new biome added, which at first glance looks really cool. Now we move on to the image that has a lot of information with a screen that looks like some form of upgrade UI. Okay, let's go through this and see what we can find. Let's start with the bottom right since that section has the simplest looking elements to it. We can see what looks like the loadout the player in question is using. We see the Lock 1 Smart Rifle from normal DRG, so we can assume that several of the weapons from the base game will make an appearance. We also see a pistol, which is probably the pistol that we keep seeing in the screenshots. It's safe to assume that this is the standard issue weapon that we will start off with. What's interesting is that there is also a third apparent weapon slot. This is big because in normal DRG we only have two weapons to use, so this will certainly change up combat a good amount. One thing the devs have told us regarding this is that we will be able to put anything we want in these equipment slots, from weapons to grenades to even traversal tools, so we really will be able to put together any kind of loadout or setup that we want which will be very interesting to experiment with. Ghost Ship actually released several images of sketches for potential weapons that may or may not make it to full release, however it's clear that they are definitely upping their game in terms of weapon design, and I'm excited to see what these sketches turn into. Then we see something interesting with what's called a suit ability, which in this case is called time dilation. Violation. Remember the devs told us that for this game there is more of a custom class system, where there is no set loadout for the classes and instead you get to put together your own playstyle. I can imagine other abilities being things like the shield, similar to what the gunner has, or maybe even the sentry gun for the engineer could be a possible ability as well. This idea of having our own personal ability to change out is going to give us even more ways to customize our combat powers, which I am very much looking forward to. Shifting slightly to the left, we see what I can only assume is some sort of passive ability equipped to the player. The ability in question, called Bastion, says it gives 100% damage and 50% damage reduction while standing still. I assume there are going to be many different types of passive skills that will all have different effects such as more damage or health regeneration and several other ones. I'm not sure if this is something that you will pick beforehand when you go into the missions or if it's something that you're going to find as you progress, but either way it's still a very cool idea that just gives us another level of customization. Moving up towards the center of the screen, we get the biggest element of the image with what appears to be several upgrade choices that the player can choose from. Now there are a few things to note about this section that can possibly be missed. First, the choice on the far left seems to be already taken by one of the teammates, indicated by the image being slightly dimmed and the same icon being next to the player's name. This gives us the impression that this is a pool of upgrades that the entire team needs to choose from and divide amongst themselves, so you will have to communicate with your team to see who gets what upgrades for whatever build they are trying to create. We can also see that you have the ability to mark certain upgrades as favorites to presumably let your teammates know which upgrades you would prefer to have. I guess this is a good idea for teams who don't have a lot of communication so they know what to take and what not to take. However, I'm sure people will still just grab whatever they want without asking anyone. Anyway, we also get a little taste of the kinds of upgrade choices these can provide. 
with simple choices like more shields and better long range damage, to more intricate choices like Sweet Surrender, which gives a chance for Red Sugar to spawn when a medium sized or larger enemy is killed, which to me seems really, really strong, and honestly that should be legendary instead of the super fast reload one, but perhaps these are just placeholders at the moment. Lastly, in the bottom left, we see what I can only assume is the pool of upgrades that the player has already acquired throughout the run. This can give us a good indication of the amount of time spent in the caves during a mission. Remember that an average run is said to be between 30 and 90 minutes, so you will most likely be hoarding many upgrades to improve you as you progress. Finally, the last three screenshots we have all show essentially the same thing, just slightly different. We see another POV shot, this time however, the player is interacting with some sort of pad on their arm, which seems to show the icon for their suit's ability. This is most likely just before the activation of said ability. One thing we do see is the text upgrade progress and a percentage that says loading. I'm not sure exactly what this could mean, and it could either be a cooldown in order to use the power, or perhaps the abilities upgrade themselves over time. Either way, we'll have to wait for the full release to know for certain. Outside of that, each of these shots show us more scenery from several of the biomes, like the one we saw earlier with the large green crystals, as well as one that has some very interesting typography, with what appears to be some strange root-like tendrils stretching from the ceiling. It kind of reminds me of the hollow bow biome, but it seems to be another one completely different that has its own environment to it. Also, I'm not sure if those are supposed to be giant red sugar deposits, but if they are, that is a lot of health. One last little thing we see in one of those shots is a yellow flare in the very center of the screen. We know that there are no set classes in the game, so it may be possible that we can select whatever flare color we want. Let me know in the comments what color you're going to make your flares if you're able to. Well, hopefully we found some hints or hidden secrets in these images, and hopefully you guys have a better idea of what to expect from Rogue Core when it does come out. Remember that since the game is in super early development, a ton of stuff is up in the air, and much of it is subject to change at really any point. I'll try my best to keep you guys updated with Rogue Core information as best I can, and then let me know in the comments how excited you guys are, because personally, I am really looking forward to seeing what comes out of this new project. Anyway, I hope you guys found this video helpful. If you did, please give it a like, because it tells me what types of videos you guys want to see. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next video.